event wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the absolute genius of James Briggs. So his presentation is going to blow you away. <laughs> it is going to change the way you think from here on in. James. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm really glad we've got a new one of these because as ever I have too many slides and not enough time so I'm, I'll just rattle on shall I. I'm really glad I would be if it was working. <laughs> hey! Right, okay. Way, way back in the mid mists of the mid 1990s my ex-boss Mark Phillips was director of fundraising at YMCA England and he ran a very successful direct mail program asking people to help homeless young men. Now, I don't think I'm giving too much away if I suggest that the YMCA actually, the focus of its work isn't necessarily all about homeless young men. But one of the first things that we can learn from this that Mark did was to actually identify the bit of your work that people really like to give money to and then focus on that. So Mark did lots of great mail packs telling people that, um, you know, there was a place where young men could get themselves clean, have a good meal, etc., and asking them for money. And, and those packs did very, very well. Um, and this is, this is back in the day, so we were getting, you know, you'd get responses of 3 or 4%. But that wasn't good enough for Mark, and he asked himself, 3 or 4%, yeah, great, let's focus on them, make them happy. What about the 97% that aren't giving? Are these people uncaring sociopaths? Or is there something else going on here? And what he worked out, which isn't too much of a, a leap, although a great leap of PowerPoint, obviously, is that these were just normal people who didn't have unlimited money and were being asked for money all the time. And so in order not to be bankrupt, what they had to do was to say no. And when you say no, you feel a bit bad. And a good way to stop feeling bad is to invent barriers and to invent reasons why you shouldn't be giving in the first place. And so people would say, well, these young people deserve it, or the government should do something, yada, yada, yada. But the two biggest barriers, and the barriers that this pack really seeks to address, were that people will say, I can't afford it, and I'll do it later. And these really are the, the enemies of, of direct fundraising. And so what, what Mark did, this is going to click on too far now, he asked people, for the simplest, told you, <laughs> easiest gift they could make. One pound in cash. So it's very hard to say, I'll do it later, I can't afford it, when we're only asking you for a quid that's already in your pocket. And so, <laughs> this is the thing that I wish I'd thought of. This is the first pound pack. Now there were lots of them that came after this. This is the YMCA pound pack. Those of you, the young people among you, who don't remember these, this is a hole in a piece of cardboard and you actually put a pound coin in there. It's a really, really lovely mechanic. It actually is quite fun to use. You don't need a pen, you don't need a checkbook, you don't really need anything to give apart from that pound in your pocket. And the headline, the headline's lovely. Please, please, give me a pound. When it costs so little, can you say no? And there's Sam o. Maguire. The models that we used for YMCA um, had a depressing kind of, uh, habit of turning up in Hollyoaks a few months later. So <laughs> they, this, these packs were the gateway to stardom for many. Um, oh, this is really slow. <laughs> Bear with me, I promise. Right, okay, so ooh, <laughs> inside the, the pound pack, it's just like a, a whole mail pack shrunk to little Lilliputian sort of size and crammed onto a too small bit of paper. So in the middle, you have a letter which was very beautifully written. And on the edges, you'd have case studies which told stories, one story of need, one story of success. Um, how the millions of old ladies who emailed this pack ever actually managed to read it, because we were like eight point sans serif because they wouldn't let us use a proper font. Um, but, you know, it worked. And as it worked, the data was being captured because on the back of the coin pack was the person who you sent it to. So there's a rattle of pound coins in the YMCA and there were a lot of pound coins. So this pack would routinely get 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 45% responses, not quite from cold, those ones, those were from reciprocal lists. And this thing, until other charities caught on, 
was the evilest trick you could ever play on a reciprocal lift. It'd be like, hi, mind, can we, can we mail your file, thanks? <laughs> That'll be 45% of it that we've just <laughs> stuck into our, our database. But they, they, don't be so sore, because we got half of them off age concern last week anyway. It worked fantastically well. So, I guess being relationship marketers, we all know at this point, the next thing that we do is ask someone for some more money. But the genius of this process was, is this adding suspense or just getting boring? <laughs> hey, the genius of the process was that rather than ask for money, what happened next was that the YMCA would ask you to send a welcome card to a young person moving into their room at the YMCA. So they got a little bit of your money, and then they got a little bit of your love. And then, and only then, once we'd gone through this process, would we phone you up and ask you for a direct debit. Now bear in mind, this is, this is donkey's years ago, 15 years ago. This is pre-paperless direct debit. But this process still made an absolute fortune. So as well as being a really lovely mechanic in itself, it also represented the start of a journey that went from a tiny little action through an emotional engagement to a much larger commitment, which if you read Adrian Sargent or if you all go and read Friedman and Frazier's research on the momentum of compliance, absolutely textbook stuff, but I think it was just done intuitively before anyone was really thinking about it. More suspense. So, just before I go, um, anyone who's, who's, who's heard me talk, really, in the last year or so, I'll apologize for repeating this, but I try and think about fundraising as itches and scratches. And the world is full of itches, itches being things that make you upset and uncomfortable and really put you out of sorts, and scratches being solutions to those things that feel good and that you can do and are simple. And if you can find a really good itch, which shouldn't be too hard, because as I said, the world is full of terrible things, and you find a really good scratch, then if you have the right mechanic, then you can raise loads and loads of money and you can recruit an awful lot of donors. This, this incredible innovation for the child line, which included drilling two more holes in the bit of cardboard, <laughs> <laughs> who'd have thunk it, suppressed response a little bit, income went up. But just look at the proposition. What can you do with three pounds that you can answer a child's call for help? And so I guess that it is for my money, the coolest, funnest fundraising mechanic ever. But unless you have something to hang it on, unless you have an itch and a scratch, unless you have a reason for people to give, then to be honest, all the mechanics in the world aren't gonna get you anywhere if you can't tell people why they should give a pound to your organization. That's me, thank you very much. <laughs>